quantitative analysis with an ion selective electrode. To demonstrate proper handling of an ion selective electrode for accurate measurements and to minimize risk of damaging the electrodes. Ensure you are wearing proper personal protective equipment when working in the lab. You should have an ion selective electrode, a reference electrode, a potentiostat, a stir bar, a stir plate, and a stir bar retriever ready. As well, prepare a waste beaker and a beaker for your samples. Before proceeding, check to make sure that the meter is on and in standby mode. Before we immerse the electrodes into the solution, we need to rinse them. Remove the ion selective electrode from the stand. Use a squirt bottle with deionized water to rinse the electrode over a large waste beaker. Rinsing the electrodes minimizes cross-contamination between residual contaminants on the electrodes and our sample. It is important to dry the ion selective electrode to avoid diluting the sample with water from the washing step. It is crucial to blot, but not wipe, the tip of the electrode to avoid damaging the ion selective membrane. The polymer membrane selects for the activity of one ion over another. For example, the electrode we will be using has a membrane selective for potassium ions. Following the same rinsing step, rinse the reference electrode with deionized water and gently blot the tip with a chem wipe. Also, rinse and dry the stir bar. Before measuring a standard or sample, Rinse the beaker three times with a small amount of the solution being measured. Tilt the beaker to ensure the whole inner surface has been rinsed and pour out the rinses into a waste beaker. Change the readout on the meter to the millivolt setting by pressing the absolute button. Make sure the readout displays ABS or absolute for absolute measurements and the millivolt unit is visible. Pour the solution you're measuring into the sample beaker that was previously rinsed and place the clean, dry stir bar into the beaker. Slowly increase the stir rate until the stir bar is moving quickly. If the solution is stirring too slowly, there will be insufficient mixing of the solution during the experiment. If it is stirring too quickly or the beaker is off-center, there is a risk of damaging the electrodes or spilling solution from the beaker. Now it is time to measure our first standard. Slowly lower the arm with the ion selective electrode and the reference electrode into the solution. For solutions with a high concentration of standard or sample, we should expect the potential reading to stabilize within one minute. However, with lower concentrations of the analyte, it can take up to four minutes for this reading to stabilize. Ideally, we want the reading to stabilize for all of the samples measured. If the reading does not stabilize, you can take an average of the readings over three minutes, recording the reading once every 30 seconds. Once the potential of the sample has been recorded, remove the stir bar using a magnetic wand or a larger stir bar. Rinse the stir bar and the electrodes with deionized water, then dry the electrodes by blotting them as shown previously. Rinse the sample beaker with the next standard to be analyzed. Then, fill the beaker with the standard being analyzed and carry out the next measurement. By plotting the potential of the standard solutions as a function of the log of their concentration, we can construct a calibration curve. The first standard measured should always be the lowest concentration, then move on to the next most dilute solution with each subsequent measurement. Using the calibration curve, the concentration of an unknown solution can be determined by measuring its corresponding potential. When you are finished the experiment, rinse the electrodes and the stir bars with deionized water. Put the ion selective electrode back into the electrode arm and place the reference electrode in a 0.05 molar potassium chloride solution.